this nonsense? I don't need this nonsense. I don't do hogs. I don't do cats and litter boxes. You do hogs. I do a part. days he doesn't open the door. He wants filth, he's got filth. He wants it to smell, it smells. Don't put nothing away. Nobody puts nothing away. as a body, so you check it out. Suicide. What do you do with that? You can't write a column about a suicide. A novel, maybe, but not a column. Because when a man takes his own life, you either understand everything about him, or you don't understand anything at all. Hi, Ryder. Hi, Tom. In a couple of hundred words, I'm not going to get inside his head. Show my readers over their morning coffee what made him tick and what made him stop. And if I can't make him out to be a Hamlet, there's only one other choice. Bury him on the back page. Hi. Who found him? Cleaning lady. Not very pretty. The coroner says that from the way the guy looked, he must have been hanging there for two days, but they'll know better when they take him down to the lab. His name was Martin Heckler. Now, according to the landlord, he was uh, behind in his rent, and he didn't seem to work. Okay. Never could figure out how a guy could do a thing like that. Is this the way you found it? Everything's exactly where it was, except they got pictures and dusted. See anything? You have pictures of this? Everything will be. Must have kicked the chair away, I guess. I guess. Well, let's wrap it up. Check back into the office. <laughs> uh, Jane, you got any matches in your web? Huh? Come on, bring me some. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Must be a slow news day if you're covering suicide. Well, I was hoping for better. What the hell? The guy's got worse problems than I do. You gonna write about it? Well, it's not exactly the Lindbergh kidnapping, but I've got to put something in that space under my face. Why are you so quiet tonight? Just thinking about some. Hurt yourself before doing that. Huh. Nikki, can we get a couple beers? Mars thinking his milk. Hi, Frank. Hi. I like that article you wrote, Tom. Huh? Oh. Uh, which one exactly? The one on uh, crime in welfare hotels. Yeah. There's your part the way they have to live. You miss the whole point. So I love constructive criticism. Hey, Jane, I got a light. I need a beer. Whoa! Better than that, I guess. Yeah, it's still my beer. No, it seems to be all right. Tommy, you want to get up on this thing? Or oh, you want me to give a speech? No, just get up on it. <laughs> This 
This is not my idea. This is his idea. <laughs> hey, you're the one who got up there. Kevin, what exactly are you doing? Grab onto the bar, Bubby. You can do that. I think Kevin's going to auction Tom off. You know, hold onto the bar. Keep your weight on the seat. All right? Ready? Uh -huh. Eli, you know how I hate hanging around. You promise to spell my name right? Yeah. Oh, that's very convincing. Newton used an apple. Frankie, look familiar? Come and gets up in a chair. It's just like she does, kicks over the chair, maybe rolls over a little bit, but it does not slide. It does not leave skid marks. How long do I have to hold her? Put me down now. Thank you. So what's the point? Remember the skid marks in Heschler's bathroom? Let's find out about this guy. Everything we can on him. So if we didn't hang himself, somebody else hung him. I know how to shoot a guy. I know how to stab a guy. But how do you hang a guy? Just don't ask his permission. Uh, so, Brian, on that suicide, I want you to... What is going on here? I was just showing Colby here how I won the uh, Olympic medal, sir. No, what are we not telling here? you how to a do your job? A suicide or a homicide? Go back to the apartment and check the skid marks and get back to me. No, nothing here. Thanks a lot. You get anything? Well, he's got a record. What does that mean? What is it? Narcotics. He did four years in Placerville on a federal narcotics charge. He doesn't seem to have any other record. Couldn't find a thing. No employment record, nothing. I got friends who's going back to the apartment to sniff around. They don't have to, as far as I'm concerned. I'm completely convinced. Well, that just about wraps it up, doesn't it? Have you ever considered that maybe he changed his mind after he went off the chair? Tried to climb back on and kicked it over? We didn't think of that one. We could test it out, though. For God's sakes, Carson, will you keep your feet on the ground? Can we get this thing settled one way or the other? I mean, before we have the whole precinct hanging from the beam. Opera tickets here, opera tickets. Come on, people, how about some opera tickets here? Lady, how about opera tickets? Now, sir, come on. People singing really loud, it's amazing. People, come on, it's amazing. Right up front, fantastic seat. Ah, oh, come on. Sir, madam, how about it, huh? Opera tickets, fantastic price on it, huh? You get to sit right up front, you get to see right down their throat. Lady, come on, you can afford a coat, you can afford it. Don't take her to a moment. Hey, Whitey, you're really getting up in the world. Where's the rest of your tie? Oh, look, guys, please, give me a break, will you? The show's starting in 15 minutes, hey, huh? Cramp your style. I got a couple questions for you. Oh, Brian, you don't understand. I've got cash out for these suckers. You know what I'm saying? You seen this guy? No, I haven't. Sir, how about a couple of opera tickets? You got some cash sitting around? Uh, uh, have another look. The answer's still no, O'Brien. What the hell do you want this guy for? I don't. He's dead. He's dead. Nice timing. What do you want from me? He did some time in Placer, Bill, for dealing. See what you can find out about him. All right, I'll see what I can do for you, okay? Let me get my living going on here. What's opera the name of the opera? Huh? What's the name of the opera? I don't know, Jamboni. About some woman that becomes a butterfly or something, you know? That's very interesting. Yeah. There's a car chase scene. They take their pants off halfway through the show. You'll love it. Please. He's pointing the gun at me. I'm not looking at the customers. I'm just looking at this gun. What happened then? He just turns around and he shoots him. That's all right. It. All right, thanks. You can go. What do you got? It's our opera lover friend. He says he's turned up something. Okay.
say it, nobody cheated you. You relax, the more tense you get, you start looking like Don Knotts, okay? Now, look, the deal was, you get half what I made. I made five bucks. So oh, that's just great. Look, you don't believe me? Look at this, huh? Five tickets, that's all I got left. Hey, come on. Oh. Oh. All right. Now what am I gonna do? I didn't do that. I gotta be on stage in two minutes. Look, don't worry about it. Here, cover it up with this, okay? Nobody will see it. It's the strip joy. No one's gonna be watching you. Look at Willie Nelson, huh? It's the music they want. Get out there. Play some Led Zeppelin or something. Hard night. Well, 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 uh... <clears throat> That's my cousin. I guess somebody's gotta take care of him, huh? Let's hear it. All right, look. I don't know who you guys are getting your information from, but if I were you, I'd think of hiring somebody else, okay? Save your editorials. What's the problem? Look, O'Brien, I checked with three of my associates in place with him. All right, about this dude? Absolutely nobody heard of him. Maybe he kept to himself. Come on, if the guy was in the dope, these guys would have had to have heard of him, okay? Hey, nobody keeps that much to himself. Nothing here. Hey, nice seeing you guys. Next time you decide to waste my time, get some facts. Gonna have to start looking for a new informer, you know. Right. Okay, maybe about 15 minutes. Mom, right. I gotta go. Okay, love, come on, bye, hi today. You're not gonna believe this. Give us a try. Corelli, the guy who was shot in the holdup tonight, he had a previous record. Guess where? Placerville. Three years for dealing. I'll bet you they were roommates. And all of a sudden, they're both dead. A suicide and a stick-up. Only the suicide, not a suicide. Makes you kind of wonder what that stick-up. All right, get in touch with Federal Corrections and nail this thing down. Either they were doing time there or they weren't. Wait a minute. Look at this. They were both in Placerville at the same time. Now, nobody saw Heschler. Richard, nobody saw Corelli either. So maybe neither of them were there. But somebody wanted somebody else to think that they were. So, uh, you fellas doing a little slumming or what, huh? Could be just social. Could be, but uh, I don't get that feeling. We got a situation here. Uh-huh. We think maybe two of your undercovers have been killed. Our undercovers? Mm-hmm. When the hell did you hear that? Heschler and Corelli. Names ring a bell? No, nah, not ours. Take another look. Nope. It's not another one of your little games, is it? Listen, when we put our people on a deep cover, they stay that way, you know what I mean? If you're telling me you bring them in DOA, party's over. If they're mine, I'm not gonna hide it. I'm gonna tell you what I know. They're both dead. They both had rap sheets on them that said they did time in Placerville. Placerville says they never heard of them. Kind of your style, isn't it? What can I say? It's gotta be some other government. Make a couple phone calls, all right? Much obliged. Good luck, fellas. you been doing? Nothing makes any sense. Send Frankie home, I should do the same thing myself. <laughs> nice try. Grab yourself a wash and a shave. We've got to be downtown forthwith. Downtown? Nine o'clock sharp. Chief of detective's office. What in the hell is that about? Well, you tell me. What buttons have you been pushing? Lieutenant Hogan, Detective O'Brien, Mid-South. We're here to see the chief. Do you have an appointment? He wanted to talk to us. Lieutenant Hogan and Detective O'Brien. You may go right in. He's expecting you. Thanks. Gentlemen. Lieutenant Hogan, Detective O'Brien, Vernon Cavanaugh. National Security Intelligence. How do you do? You've already met Agent Deacon. Not really. You're going to be working with these gentlemen. 
Seems we have had a little problem with overlap here. You want to fill them in? Thank you. You're investigating two homicides, a man named Heschler and a man named Corelli. In both cases, the killer went to considerable lengths to make the incidents look like something other than what they were. I noticed. Both those men worked for us at one time, for Mr. Deacon, to be specific. Is that why they were killed? I think that's a reasonable assumption. You know why they were killed? No, sir, we do not. They were involved in some rather sensitive matters. I think we can let it rest there. It would help me if I knew what they were doing. I appreciate that, Kevin. But that's the difficulty here. There are some, some aspects of the matter that we've been asked not to look into. No one's trying to tie your hands, Detective O'Brien. It's just that we have to operate on a need-to-know basis in this case. They were killed for a reason. Isn't that something I need to know? That's why you'll be working with Mr. Deacon. I'm sure the two of you can work out the ground rules. Thanks, O'Brien. Jim, I want to talk to you. OK, Deacon. Kevin, mm. just a minute. You want to work with Frank in this, don't you? He's my partner. I don't anticipate any problem. Should I, O'Brien? I don't know what gives you problems. Detective Jambone, isn't it? Mm hmm Eschler, Corelli, Murray Logan, Michael Patterson. You were right. The arrest records were fabricated. But you can't tell us what they were doing. It doesn't concern you. Everything you need to know about them is in these files. Any of it true? Eschler and Corelli were part of a four-man cell. The other two members were uh, Marie Logan and Michael Patterson. Presumably, they're still alive. Presumably. Well, what are we presuming here? Whoever killed Heschler and Corelli is looking to kill the other two? Hmm? That's precisely why I'm here. If someone's trying to kill two of your men, why don't you just get them out of the city? It's not so simple. My guess is that uh, they've already heard that Heschler and Corelli are dead. And they've come to the same conclusions we have. They're probably in hiding. And they'll take whatever measures necessary to stay that way. They sound as dangerous as the killers. It's not as sinister as it sounds. You're trying to solve two homicides. I'm trying to find two of my agents and keep them alive. And your killer is looking for my agents. I think that gives us a lot in common. You guys can pull strings we've never even heard of. What do you need us for? We deal in foreign intelligence. Our authority to operate inside the country is limited. Doesn't usually stop you, does it? Another one of your little quizzes or something, huh? Just some part of that question you didn't understand? No, but I think you gotta be senile or something. I thought we said these two were already dead. I wanna know if you know them. Jambone. He said Placerville. I said no. You said they were dead. Are you telling me these two are dead too? Not yet. Are they looking to get dead? Listen, I'll ask the questions, okay? Well, I was just wondering, you got these two sitting with these other two dead people here. I wanna know if you know them. Well, the chick, maybe. I know her old man's into a lot of drugs. Yeah, where is she? I have no idea, but I think I can get a line on her old man. OK, do that for me. Hey, Jambone, don't I always come through for you, huh? You sure do. All right, take it easy. Hey, you mind? I'll send you an invite to the wedding, OK? Relax. <laughs> we'll even name one of the kids after you, little Jambone. Can I speak to you? Hang on a minute. What do you got? Just, come here. What is it? 
I just talked with Whitey. He hasn't seen this Marie Logan, but he knows the guy she's living with. Not bad for starters. The whole thing's pretty damn spooky, if you ask me. Why, who is he? No, no, not the guy. I mean, your friend Deacon. I mean, you know, he's in there, we're out here. I mean, I'm starting to feel like a spy. We can't even talk in an old squad room. Come on. Am I imagining this? I mean, I thought you said I'm supposed to tell you everything first. You told me. Now let's go tell him. I dug up a source who knows Marie Logan. Who is it? Need to know, basis, Deacon. Okay, what'd you find out? She's living with a small-time hood named Eddie Parent. He fences, runs a book, and uh, doesn't arrest him two convictions. Mm, probably supplying her with drugs. High caliber of people you had working for you. She was very useful and very good. Hi, guys. Yeah. Give us a minute, Freddy. Lieutenant wants these reports. One minute. chances of finding Eddie Parent. I already got the word out they're looking for him. We know his habits, we know his hangout. Somebody will see him and give us a call. So far, that's all we've got. Yeah. And the killer's two victims ahead of us. Dead. Damn it. Just talked for a couple of beers, said goodbye, walked out, and didn't have any trouble with anybody. It's all right. Let him through. Okay, thanks. We'll take it from here. It's okay, Kevin. Colby and I caught it. We can run with it. We're taking it. We know how to conduct a homicide investigation. That's all right, Stevie. Come on. No, it's not all right. Look, if you don't think that we can handle it, I want to know why. It's connected with something else. What? Yeah, okay, no problem. If they want it, let them have it. Who is that guy? We'll catch up with you at the office. That's not an answer. Just cool down. Let's not get mixed up with it, huh? Seems like we're not the only ones wanting to ask Eddie Parent about his girlfriend. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. Killer's one step ahead of us. More than that, if Eddie told him where he could find her. Unless she murdered him. What? Eddie Parent knew her better than anyone. Maybe he knew where she'd hide. He couldn't take a chance on that. Now, what the hell are we talking about here? We're talking about desperate people who know they're being hunted. They don't take chances. They're highly trained professionals. And what? Anything you want. Counterinsurgency, explosives, jungle warfare. One of them's a drug addict. You don't forget training like that. I'm not so sure about that. I'm sure. I trained them. Then maybe you wouldn't mind telling us what the hell this is about. Three people are dead, and I don't know whether someone's chasing Matahari or she's chasing him, or who's killing who around here. I thought he knew the rules. What rules? You make them up as you go along. If I could tell you more, I would. We don't need hotheads along on an operation like this. Deacon, this isn't a jungle. I don't run operations. I investigate murders. 
You're amateurs when it comes to things like this, both of you. Believe me. Take it easy, you're gonna bite a hole in the cup. This doesn't bother you? It bothers the hell out of me. Just tell me on the choices that we got. One, we don't have to worry. Oh, that's what I mean. We can't even talk around here anymore. What can't we talk about? Oh, that's a good question. You learned that in journalism school. No, I picked it up myself. You'd be surprised how many people answered. Go ahead, tell them. We're just amateurs of this sort of thing. Before I was curious. Now I'm downright interested. Our hands are tied. Sounds big. Listen, didn't you hear what he said? Our hands are tied, okay? Cheerful bunch I walked into tonight. Hiya, Nick. That's the bar business. Oh, great until the happy couple came in. And don't ask. I'm not telling. <laughs> because I don't know anything. Nicky's. Yeah, one moment, please. O'Brien. O'Brien? I found her. The Selby Hotel. How fast can you get down here? Is he? He's around here somewhere. Check inside. He's got a room on the third floor at the back. Is she in it? Yes, clerk says she's been up there all night. I think we've gotten lucky. Patterson just went up. Well, that solves your problem. Let's go talk to them and see if they can solve ours. It's not going to be so easy. They're still worried about a killer after them. They're frightened. They're going to shoot at anything that moves. They're not going to trust anyone. Let me handle it. They're your people. Frankie, why don't you keep an eye on the alley? Call for a backup. You got it. cars in the vicinity of 12th and Selby. Pretty clear by now. Yeah, but you said someone was trying to kill Patterson, the girl, right? It was one of the possibilities. We're not infallible, O'Brien. You were hunting up and down for a fifth man. Now, why in the hell didn't you tell me you suspected one of them? What difference did it make? One was the target and one was the killer. We had to find them both. Third floor. Hello, Frank and Ronnie. Was 
an evening. Tell me about it. Why don't you tell me about it? Let's not start that again, Tommy. All right, listen, Frank, I'm tired of playing games. I do my own checking, too. There's bodies falling all over the place. You two guys playing tag with Jack Deacon. What do you know about Deacon? Which is it, Frank? You want me asking questions in the newspaper? What is this, blackmail? Freedom of the press. 1270, George Kent. Deacon, it's Tom Kirkwood. I gave him your message, Tom. It's a pleasure, Mr. Deacon. All right, Mr. Kirkwood, let's cut the crap. You want to talk with me? Well, I want some answers. If you got the answers, I want to talk to you. I'm afraid it's not all so simple. I am. I'm very simple. I believe in simple things, like the people having a right to know what the government is doing. I couldn't agree with you more, in principle. I'll tell you what I can. It should satisfy you, but I have to insist it's off the record. What good does that do me? Once this is over, you publish whatever you want. If that's acceptable, I'll give you the story. What if it's not acceptable? All you got now is questions. I'll take my chances. Can I take notes? No notes. I'll trust your memory. It's about drugs. Three years ago, I uh, put a team together. I trained them myself. There were no company people. We wanted outsiders. For deniability? Of course. They would make a drug buy in Colombia. That's what the uh, criminal records were for. Biographies were created for them in case anyone wanted to check. What were the drugs for? Well, let's just say they were an element in a covert operation aimed at a certain unfriendly country. That was a policy decision, and I'm not going to discuss the political objectives with you. Even off the record, that's all I can say. Point is, they went in and made the buy. Something went wrong. Everything went wrong. It wasn't the brightest idea, politically, tactically, whatever terms you want. One of my people blew the operation. The drugs disappeared. That should have been the end of the story. And you just forget it. Coke's floating out there, waiting to hit the streets, and you just write it off. Drug trafficking is not our concern. It is if you're part of it. I understand what you're saying, but you have to appreciate the delicate nature of this operation. We could hardly alert anyone to the problem without uh, some very embarrassing questions being raised. So how does that get us to where we are now? Greed, I assume. Our operatives knew where the drugs were. We didn't. They must have worked out some arrangement among themselves to guarantee a fair split. Apparently, Mr. Patterson didn't like the deal. Wait a minute. Uh, let me get this straight. Patterson killed the other three because he didn't want to split? It's certainly the way it looks. So Patterson has the drugs now? I assume he can get them. He's killed the only three people standing in his way. If we can find the drugs... We'll find him. Four people dead. This guy can't answer three straight questions. Drug smuggling, the government right in the middle of it, and you two guys are just helping some intelligence wacko hold up the embarrassment factor. We're looking for a murderer. I don't give a damn about the politics. Don't you think maybe you ought to? Maybe that's your job. It's not mine. Well, didn't you hear him? It's off the record. If I print anything, he's probably covered so many ways, I'll probably have tough enough time proving there is such a thing as a Jack Deacon.
Kirkwood. We gotta talk. Oh no, all that's perfectly clear. There are covert operations all over the southern hemisphere. None of it authorized. What are we talking about here? Uncut cocaine. Two million dollars worth. We're subverting unfriendly populations by hooking them on drugs. Is that the idea? More or less. Do you have any idea what went wrong? They've all got ideas. He uh, says the drugs disappeared. What does that mean? The shipment never came through. One of the four. Five. Five. Don't rule Deacon out. Central, car 193. I have vehicle sought in connection with 1030. Request instructions. Keep vehicle under surveillance. Do not attempt to apprehend. Affirmative. We'll maintain surveillance. Brian. Where? Okay, stay with him. We'll be right there. Patterson? Yep. Black male approaching subject vehicle. Entering vehicle. Vehicle in motion. Proceeding north on Elm. Maintaining surveillance. Affirmative 193. Instructions unchanged. Do not attempt to apprehend. Give me your position 193. Elm at 12. Proceeding north. Vicinity, Almond Prospect, give assistance. Unmarked units involved. Turning east on Prospect. Central, 193. I have an unmarked vehicle in pursuit. What in the hell? Must be Deacon. Time to close in and take Patterson. Close in, take Patterson. Affirmative. We'll attempt to apprehend. Request other units. Other units in response. Give me your position. Turning north on the Bay Shore. 12 7, we copy. Traffic. We've lost sight of them. All units. All units. Vicinity Bay Shore on 18th. I don't have time to explain, so listen closely. When the others get here, tell them to form a perimeter. No one in, no one out. Understand? Uh, are there any other exits? Close the gate. I ran in there. Some pet went in after him. Said we're supposed to hold out here. Okay, let's go. Colby, get all the backup units you can. Seal the place off. I want Patterson alive. I want both of them alive.
up, Patterson. Who the hell are you? Police. Throw the gun out and come on out. You're with Deacon. You killed him. Well, you're not going to kill me. We're not with Deacon. Deacon! You can have it. You can keep it, Deacon. Keep it. I'm out, Deacon. I'm out. Hold it right there, Deacon. Take it easy. It had to be done. Drop the gun. I said drop it. He's dead, Kevin. Down the side, Frank. around the whole time. He had us looking for the fifth man. He was the fifth man. Well, who the hell's the sixth man? We're both going to be old men before we figure any of this out, Frankie. Jack Deacon died as mysteriously as he lived. On the books, the murders of three former intelligence agents and a small-time punk named Eddie Parent remain unsolved. So does the murder of Deacon himself. Deacon. He had the drugs all along. The others found out about it and they wanted a piece. He was an embarrassment to the agency. See you downtown. I'll try. There is an evil that's beyond greed, beyond one man's sordid quest for a profit in illegal drugs. It started with the idea. It started as an instrument of policy. The twists, the turns, the double and triple crosses. They were all built into that idea. They spread from it, the way cancer spreads.